Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Costume Co. Uh, we're live today, though, and I have this amazing guest with me. He's actually this way on my uh, Mr. Christopher Laverty or Lord Christopher Laverty, and he's all decked out in this. Uh, <laughs> it's like the same mask as I'm pretty sure it's the same mask they use in the movie. I don't know how well anyone. It looks can exactly it. the same. It's pretty yeah, much so. It's not uh, the last time Christopher was here. We he actually you wore a uh, you had a tiara. I, oh, it was a it was a crown actually. It was a crown. He always comes with props. I always so, come wrong. I'm not sure how much longer I can keep to. That's probably. <laughs> It's, it your it's, there, it's, it's hindering your mustache. Like the, the wax is going to get like. <laughs> it's going to get all sweaty and droop. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I just want to say, hey, guys, I'm so glad you were, you could all be here. Uh, it's the afternoon for me, but for Christopher, it's the evening. It is. He is in, he's in the UK. It's pouring with rain and it's dark oh. and it's autumn. And I actually kind of love it. It's that time of year. I love autumn. It's just the best time of year, I think. It's just. You know, I'm not a summer guy and I'm always boiling hot. So, yeah, I'm, I'm actually quite happy right now. Yeah, it's we have well, England and Canada has very similar weather. So it's not raining, but it's quite cool here. Um, <laughs> but anyway, Christopher, I want to thank you so much for coming today. I've been oh, wanting to welcome. have you back. And uh, but anyway, for anybody who doesn't know who you are, I don't know how they could not. Could you, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, yeah, OK, I, I run. Uh, a website called Close On Film, which I started up uh, 10 years ago now. Um, it was a strange thing. It was because I, I didn't have a, I was writing, but I didn't have a lot of work at the time. So it was the blogging time. Everyone was kind of kicking off doing blogs about absolutely everything. Um, and although I didn't think it would make any money or do anything like that, I thought if I'm going to put some work out there, at least I can put it out about what I'm interested in and, and what I want to talk about. And I thought, no one was talking about costume design in film. Uh, like, really, I, I could name like a couple of writers that I found that were really doing it. Um, so I thought it would be, you know, just a cool thing, because I've been interested in it for years. And I thought, okay, well, I'll just, you know, interview a few costume designers, try and explain what costume is maybe to people that, that don't, you know, entirely understand it. Um, you know, how it works, the process. Um, and I just started sticking articles on and it really gained a lot of traction, I think, because it was, like I said, a lot of people were doing blogs, but no one was doing a blog about that. So I was kind of lucky and it got a lot of traction pretty quickly and I managed to get pretty good interviews. Um, I think mean, at a time as well, like I said, not many people were writing about costume design. So it was quite easy for me to get interviews because I'm, I'm trying to get interviews with costume designers and they're most of the time thinking, well, no one's ever really wanted to talk to me about this. So it was actually quite easy for me to, to get in contact with people. Um, so the website sort of grew and grew um, and I was doing it more almost like a daily thing. I, I had some great contributors come in. Um, and like nowadays, I don't, I don't really update it that much um, because I don't really have a lot of time to do it. But... So many more people are writing about costume design now. And there's obviously yourself as well as broadcasting about it. Things have moved on a little bit. And, you know, it, it, it's hard for me to sort of compete with the bigger, um, I mean, like Esquire with Tenet and thing, you know, they got the, the, the big interview there. Um, they have now have staff writing about costume design where 10 years ago, no one really was. Um, I was lucky. I got uh, a book deal. Um, after having the website going for uh, um, maybe four years, I think. There it is. Thank you for the pitch. Uh, there yes, we go. And, and I want to tell everybody, uh, before this is Christopher's book right here, Fashion in Film. It's a beautiful book. It's a hardbound book, actually. We're yeah. going to be giving away a copy of this at the end of the stream, and it's going to be trivia like we usually do. So uh, for anybody anybody who's here, just remember we're going to do a copy giveaway of that. Yeah. So we're, I can't we're, talk. <laughs> We're, we're, we're so I'm off to a terrible start here. Well, we're so prepared. We don't actually have the question yet. We know. We're going to come up with it. We're going to come we're, up with something good. We might just come up with a question as we're talking. But, um, yeah, so I've done a book, and, like, nowadays there's so many more people writing about costume design. I kind of just like to do interviews or deep dive things and, and hopefully more books. Um, but that's kind of who I am. I, I don't – I'm not a costume designer. I never have been. I did a little work in, in the film industry when I was younger, but never in terms of costumes. So really, I'm, I'm the guy that, that, you know, can't do but teach guy. 
um because i do lecture as well so um yeah I, I have so much respect for any people that work in a costume industry um oh my goodness i've been so lucky to meet people and even get on some sets and wow if i thought it was a difficult unknown job to begin with once i saw it close up it is insane um, these people are amazing they're my heroes i'm telling my heroes i think they're amazing yeah yeah they're fabulous and oh, you've been on my radar for a long time in fact you know when i first started this channel mine was about game of thrones i think i, I probably mentioned that to you tatiana's here in the chat today she was on the show with us uh for the oscars and so i kind of was like really there was a huge game of thrones community and i was like oh i love cersei so much i really i just have to talk about this i don't know how to do it though so i was like i'm gonna make a video what like what else, other thing can i do and uh but whereas you tend to do more contemporary uh correct me if i'm yeah. wrong about anything so i was i kind of latched on to you there's also joe from tyranny of style was another person i yeah, i'm not sure if you guys i think you guys know each other yeah yeah joe's great so he's lovely and i've actually used both interviews that you've done and joe has done uh in some of my videos so i in fact i have what i'm working on that i i'm going i'm reading your book about uh that i'm using some information from you <laughs> yeah you're, well, <laughs> i don't want to say what it is because it's going to be a surprise <laughs> okay i mean your, your video stuff inspired me to have a go at doing videos which i mean i've done a couple um i enjoy them but Technically, it's I find it very difficult um, to actually do the videos. So I want to do more of them. But wow, what you do is yeah, it's it's not easy. You make it look easy, but it's not oh, easy. That's, well, I was going to tell you too. It's sort of funny because one of the things a few people have asked me, including Tatiana, is like, how do you get these interviews with these costume designers? And you know what? Honestly, it's just you ask them. Yeah. And more times than not they'll say i have actually i haven't had anyone say no they might not respond to me but pretty much all of them have said yes yeah. and i think it's like what you say because it's a little bit of a thankless job like co yeah. good costume designers make it look so easy so they a lot of people think that anybody can do it uh that it's just one yeah. of those things well you're just putting clothes on people right yeah. so shopping. you're shopping exactly mm -hmm. so uh i just had like for instance i just did an amazing interview with uh, christopher hargett and from um the umbrella academy which i'm mm -hmm. going to have out soon and i swear to god we talked for like four hours yeah. it was so amazing just to let him like like he, he just I could pick his brain and he just told me all these really cool things. It was just so much fun and you get so much energy from it. So yeah, it's, it's surprising how I, I think when I first started this, I was a little worried that I'll be going into too much detail and, you know, boring people, but people want details and they were emailing going, well, what about this? And what about this? They got really, really into it. And I thought, okay, I can just go really, really deep dive on stuff and people seem to like it. You know, they do. They want to hear about every little thing, especially when you've got a fandom, something like, you know, Umbrella Academy. I mean, obviously Game of Thrones. Wow. Um, you know, they want to know everything. And they, they do. Will. And and like Chris, like this is the other thing he was saying, like, so he just started an Instagram account. And of course, you have an Instagram. By the way, guys, I have all of uh, Christopher's uh, social media links below. I have a link for his book below. So if you want to know more about him, I recommend you go and uh, find him. Yeah, all the links are in me. the description. Yeah. Um, but so for instance, a lot of costume designers are now starting to post their pictures on Instagram. Yeah. And oh my gosh. And then they're like, they're blown away by how people respond to it because they're like, oh, I never thought that anybody would even be interested in this. But they, yeah, are. yeah, you're right. I mean, that didn't, I mean, I don't know how long Instagram's been going, but I mean, Twitter had just sort of started when I was doing the website and really social media wasn't, wasn't a thing really. I just did it to sort of do a bit of promotion for, for posts that I was putting on. Um, and since then, it's blown up to such an extent that, it's almost, you almost have to be as, the information you're putting on social media almost has to be as good as the stuff you're putting in your interviews or things like that, because otherwise people just won't go beyond it. Um, and it's become so big uh, that it's it's almost more about that than anything else I find, which is a little bit of a shame, but you know, these things come and go. I don't know what the next Instagram will be. 
but yeah, well, or, or TikTok, which I'm like, I'm too old for that. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I tried. I, I find it funny, but yeah, um, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I know I'm too old when when I sort of sit there thinking, okay, what is the point of this? <laughs> yeah, I didn't quite understand. Yeah, yeah, too yeah. old. Uh, we actually, it's funny, Christopher. We, I did this event this week, and we were playing early '70s music, and someone in someone actually at the event trolled us by saying, "Okay, boomer, what's with the music?" And I'm like, "Oh my oh, god!" Yeah. <laughs> like it's early no. '70s music. It's so good. I want to say hi to everybody who's uh, come uh, to watch today's stream, by the way. Thank you so much. And Linda just said she subscribed to your YouTube channel. Thank you so much, Linda. All right. So the point of us doing this today, Christopher, mm-hmm. is to talk about Tenet. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah. I had the pleasure of seeing it on IMAX, which was really cool. Uh, yeah. In Toronto, we have a big IMAX theater here. And it was really weird because there was hardly anybody in the theater. So we mm-hmm. kind of had this. Uh, but it was funny because I was just checking to make sure my kids were okay. I thought there was a phone call coming in. And just as that first scene happened, and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> what is going on? Oh, right? That, fo- that first scene. Yeah. So yeah. what? Yeah. So what were your initial thoughts of the movie um, of Tenet? Uh, I mean, I, yeah, the first time I saw it was was IMAX. Um, I was determined to see it on IMAX. And the same with me, there was, there was nobody in there. Um, well, hardly anybody in there. And, you know, I literally put a suit on to go and watch it because, you know, you don't dress up anymore. And I kind of wanted to go and be part of the whole experience. And it was so funny, like you said, the first scene, which is almost like a parody of, of Chris Nolan movies because it's seconds and bam it's the bam bams come on and it's all going crazy and i'd argue actually that that first sequence in the film is one of the hardest to actually understand what on earth's really going on um but i was like okay i'll just go along with it and by the end of the film i gotta admit i I loved it and uh i can see why people have issues with it and i've seen it three times now and i it it's just so enjoyable to me it's just such a ride um but with so much going on that you can sort of i like films i can watch so many times i mean i've seen inception i actually i have no idea at one point i was watching it every day um i was obsessed with it so you know tenet really fits in it's it's like the spiritual sequel to inception in my book um so yeah personally absolutely loved it don't entirely under okay don't really get a lot of it um understand the basics of it and understand that i'm probably not supposed to understand some of it but it's so gorgeous and it was just it was cinema it was back to cinema again and that's why it was so exciting it was just such a big movie um a movie movie yeah, absolutely. Like completely cinematic. Absolutely. Yeah. And looked gorgeous, as you mentioned. And of course, a big part of that is the costumes. I also mm-hmm. love the wallpaper. I was talking about this in my last uh, stream we were doing that a lot of times I, I oftentimes I look at the clothes, but oftentimes I love the surroundings and the furnishings and the soft furnishings, especially wallpaper. So uh, everything in this movie looked completely gorgeous. Which, which wallpaper? I mean, I'm interested. Oh, I'll have to, I'll show, I think I have it in one of the pictures. Right. <laughs> wallpaper on film, you know, it, it could take. Well, I could do a channel about just that. It's a very <laughs> specific <laughs> niche. <laughs> oh, you know, it's funny you were talking uh, earlier about, you know, people, um, you know, not talking about costumes in film. And one of the reasons why actually besides Cersei that I wanted to do this is I had seen a guy who did cinematography in film and I hadn't seen anybody talk about uh, on video, at least yeah. on YouTube talking about it. So just as a side note, there are a lot of people who love to talk about just about the sound in film or they talk about just the editing in film. So I think oh, it's yeah, great. you could like, I mean, joking apart, even with the wallpaper thing. Um, I mean, OK, it's probably a little niche, but, you know, you could pretty much you could do props. Props. Like props on decor. film. Fascinating. Yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? There's there's loads of and it's certainly something that people can potentially buy or make. They're very interested in it. Yes. Um, so. Uh, now, speaking of Christopher Nolan, I know you're a big fan. So how many times have you seen Inception? I honestly, I don't know. It's got to be, like I said, at one point I was watching it every day just for a period of, I don't know why, I was just watching it and watching it and watching it. I, you, 30, maybe more. Uh, wow. I think oh once, you get, yeah, once you get into those sort of numbers, 
Um, well, you're probably clinically insane, but I have actually stopped counting as well. So, you know, I don't, I don't know too many times. I know so you could life. probably do a lecture on it. You could probably do a university um, oh, yeah. course on it. I, I would, <laughs> I would love that. Yeah, I would, that I would be fine. Right? <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, so of course, this is a Christopher Nolan film, yeah. and uh, it, it lives up to obviously his extremely high caliber of storytelling. I know Tor, as uh, mm -hmm. the costume designer described him, which I think mm -hmm. is a pretty good description. But I'm so glad that you've seen the movie three times. I've only seen it once. So I'm a little bit probably uh, in, in deep water here with it, whereas you probably uh, are going to have a better grasp of it. And I'm dying to know what your thoughts of the costumes were, because obviously we're, we want to talk about the costumes. Yeah. So what I, were your initial sort of thoughts of the costumes? I mean, I love them. It's it's very much like Inception. Um, it's it's a it, it, it's not. Then the costumes aren't fantasy costumes, but you know, they you can't really believe that they exist, or even any of what we're seeing on screen can really exist in the real world. Um, it has that kind of polish to it, in the same way as a bit like a, a, a James Bond film. You know, everybody walking around in in you know immaculate tailoring and suits. Uh, I mean, men and women, uh, everything is 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 perfect and, and neat and, and just it, it feels so cinematic. Um, and to me, like, it's very much like Inception, uh, which was also, you know, a, a lot of a lot of suit porn and just costume porn in general. Um, and it's I, I think it's it's perfect. I couldn't I couldn't change anything, even if I wanted to nitpick a few things here and there. Uh, just I might love about Jeffrey he just. He's so good at creating looks that pretty much don't date. I mean, you can go back and look at Inception, and I'm sure you can pick a couple of things here and there. But bearing in mind the film is a, a decade old, it still looks fresh as a daisy costume-wise. And I think this will date really well, too. There's only there's just a couple of bits in it. You're thinking, oh, you know, that might look a little unusual down the line. But really, you've got a lot of classic tailoring. It's generally quite slim. It's smart. Trouser breaks are, 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 you know, pretty high. It's kind of Italian looking, very European in, in most of it, I'd say. Um, but the world he created, Jeffries, is just, and not just with the tailoring and the smart look, but the because the, the, there's a lot of sort of fatigues in, in, in the film as well, a lot of sort of casual, I don't know what you call it, the, uh, the, the Tenet guys wear with the masks and the black like, uniform they have on. There's a lot of that, which, again, it feels, it feels real, but polished to a degree that you probably wouldn't have in the real world and fitted to a degree that you probably wouldn't have. I mean, everything's so perfectly fitted in this film. Yeah. Um, By the way, I was just going to mention this. Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey Kurland is the costume designer yeah. who also did, uh, who also did Inception, as you mentioned, and yeah. um, uh, as well did Dunkirk, which yeah. I felt was like snubbed at the Oscars for costume design. I was kind of surprised about that. I think when we had you yeah. on, we talked about that. You never, never have a chance with things. I think I spoke to, I remember speaking to Jeffrey about it. And it's, even though it's amazing, you're decking out hundreds of extras and the amount of distressing they needed to do, it's it's not flashy enough. And there's still that big understand, a misunderstanding in terms of costume design with voters that if it isn't grand costuming, then it isn't seen really as having to do a lot of work. Um, they do see it like that, which is a tremendous shame, but that's, yeah. that's what it's going to be. That, the costume, I don't know if I'd mentioned this to you, but the costume designer of Grease, the original movie Grease with Ivy yeah. Newton-John, he said years ago, uh, corsets win always, always, always. Yeah, he, he's um, exactly right. You know, true, even, right? Uh, I mean, I, I recently, uh, just for lockdown, actually spoke to Sandy Powell, who wins an awful lot. Oh, you got um, to speak to her. Oh, just casually, right? Yeah, just casually. <laughs> down. We, you know, we had a drink. Um, <laughs> this was good. This before it all kicked off, and I think we yeah, were she's one of my like, favorite designers. <laughs> she's great. We, we were talking about, do you think all this is going to be a big deal? And she's like, nah, that'd be fine. We'll get through it. You know, and all of COVID? Them, <laughs> yeah. And it, cause it was before it all sort of, it was when we were still sort of, you know, finding it a little bit funny before anything really I think we just thought it was going to sort of be a little bit of a thing. But um, so that was the last proper chat I had, like in, in person with a costume designer. But she she will freely admit, I know that she she knows what she knows that she can win for a lot of these things. She doesn't 
designed to win, but she's well aware that a lot of her stuff will do. And I, I think I remember reading a quote from her years ago, and I can't place the actual quote. It, it was something along the lines of, I think she almost found it a little bit of a shame that other things didn't get a look in, in terms of, I mean, you know, Tenet, yeah, it's amazing. Could not fit the world better. Could not look better. Absolutely perfect. Doesn't stand a chance of winning an Oscar whatsoever. Um, yeah. though, have we got the Oscars next year? Are they having the Oscars? I, I don't. Uh, maybe virtual, a virtual Oscar? There's only like two films that have come out, so maybe Tenet will. Yeah, be. no, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else has kind of gone straight to Twitter, or not Twitter, to, uh, what do you call it, Amazon Prime or Prime, Netflix. Not Prime. Prime's got a lot. Yeah, yeah. it does, um, or Netflix. So that's Netflix. where everything's ended up. So yeah, there's going to be two movies. <laughs> so maybe it will have a chance. It'll go up against uh, a Moana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so where are we here? Uh Oh, yeah. So by the way, so I know you had mentioned to me a while ago that you were going to have uh, an interview with Jeffrey. Did yeah. that ever pan out? Well, it, it will. Um, so it's, it still happened. I, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I got in contact with him and like we were chatting about earlier and saying, you know, pretty much if I want to do an interview, I don't really go through agents and people anymore. I'm lucky enough that I built up a list of contacts that I can potentially ask one costume designer if I know someone, or I can just ask the costume designer directly and they go, yeah, fine, we'll chat whenever. Um, I got in contact with Jeffrey and we chatted about Inception. Um, and he said, yeah, I, don't, I, can, I can't talk about Tenet at the moment. He wouldn't tell me a thing. He was so tight-lipped about it. He probably but, had to sign a non-disclosure. Oh, and he, he, I, he genuinely seemed nervous that when I got in contact and said- Wow, he was worried he was going to spill the beans. <laughs> yeah, and he said, he goes, they've all got to go through, uh, it's a Warner Brothers, they've all got to go through, um, it is Warner Brothers, I think, isn't it? Um, and, and an agent. So I got in contact and I was doing the back and forth uh, with them. Um, which is hilarious. They're like, have you ever spoke to Jeffrey before? And I'm like, yes, I've spoken to Jeffrey. You know, you know, have you seen the film? Yes, I've seen the film. I'm doing all this as if like, you know, I've never done this before. Um, but a lot of back and forth. And then from what I understand, Esquire got a, a exclusive for a certain period of time. I think if you look on the net, they're the only people that have an interview um, with Jeffrey Kerland as far as tennis concerned. Um, so I'm still waiting for my where well, their exclusive period of exclusivity to finish, and then hopefully yeah. I'll be speaking to now. I mean, they, they asked a lot of good questions. It's it actually it's a, it's a good interview. Um, good. I in fact, a lot of my notes like they came from there, so that was very, very cool. It will um, happen. At some yeah. Point. Um, so uh, yeah. So you just told me about. Um, okay. So one of the things I have to this is sort of the elephant in the room regarding my the books Brooks Brothers. <laughs> Oh, the Brooks Brothers. Yeah. Okay, so if anybody, by the way, guys, there might be some spoilers in here. So if you haven't seen the movie, mm. uh, we probably won't get into too many spoilers. But if you haven't seen it, just in case, then, then no one's going to understand anyway. If, you won't you understand it anyway. Film, exactly. We can you won't understand the whole it. film from beginning to end. If you haven't seen it, yeah, it's, it's still, we're still not going to give anything away. Yeah, like Tenant. <laughs> the title itself is a palindrome, which I didn't even realize. Like I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> I had to read about it. It's a palindrome, so it means ten either way, right? Which is really cool. I'm like, and it, and apparently it has some type of. There's other meanings behind it. Yeah, uh, Top Shelf cool. Fandom is one of my friends in here. He's probably looked into a lot of the symbolism behind it and that type mm -hmm. of thing. Um, but anyway, so uh, regarding that, what did you think of that line in the movie? What did you think about the Brooks Brothers line? Yeah, the Brooks Brothers line is, uh, let's see if we can remember, it's something, uh, Michael Caine's character, Sir Michael Crosby, I think he, he is in it. Yeah, I have a picture uh, of that I can find to, uh, John David Washington, uh, who's just known as the protagonist. Uh, if you're going to be like moving in this world, as in this world of billionaires and spies and things, your, your Brooks Brothers isn't going to cut it. In reference to the suit he has on when he meets Michael Caine's character, which we can't see, but we can see Michael Caine's character. Um, He's kind of, I, yeah, it's his back is to the camera here. Yeah, you know, though actually, I kind of wonder, I don't know if you anyone who's maybe seen it more than once would, would twig this. I don't actually think they shot that scene together. There's not one shot of them together in it. That's interesting. Um, the blocking is weird. Yeah, the blocking is weird. It, it mm -hmm. seems like they were never in the same room together to me, but, um, but I don't know. Yeah, that, that's just a little... Maybe if you've seen it, people might have a guess. And I liked his suit, what he was actually wearing. Now, okay, so 
So I don't know if you read the notes from Esquire. This is really, really funny. So mm -hmm. apparently the Brooks Brothers suit isn't actually a Brooks Brothers suit. No. It's actually a bespoke suit. <laughs> so how did they do that? It was just like you went to the tailor and went, you know, make it a bit Brooks Brothers-y, but... So what do you mean by that? I mean, because I yeah. forgot. Or did he give him a Brooks Brothers suit and say, make something like this? Because he said yeah. it wouldn't have worked. This is what he said. Mm -hmm. uh, that is so auteur <laughs> or auteur. I, it, it, it's actually a Brooks level. Brothers suit. I, I think it could have looked, the, the jacket could have been more of a, more like a sack style jacket, which Brooks Brothers are generally a bit more known for, but it's yeah. still quite a slim mm -hmm cut on him I, i'm not entirely sure a lot of people would, would pick up on it but yeah the, the brooks brothers the little I don't, I don't know if jeffrey's planning on working with brooks brothers in the future but um <laughs> or chris nolan but yeah I, it was a fun it was a fun line um, it was a fun line and then but it does actually i think there is some there's a good like sort of uh we see a nice arc with his costuming so oh, actually um gosh. So actually, we can look at a few of those pictures if you guys want to. Yeah, I mean, um, the next one. He's the, the protagonist. Let me just get uh, this line. You have here, the, there's an amazing, like, silver, practically oh. silver suit he wears. Yeah. So yeah. he sort of starts off with, now, I probably don't have these in exact order because I can't remember. Um, <laughs> I can't remember exactly what order they are. So he, he does sort of start off with this sort of look yeah. here. He, it's a lot of polo shirt. I mean, that's why what? I'm essentially dressed like this because it's it's the look for him is primarily polo shirts and suits or or sports jackets and slacks. It's, yeah. it's uh, he's got another one on there, um, and he's having a giggle with Chris Nolan in his busy vest and another polo shirt. It's a lot of polo shirts. A lot of polo shirts, and I, I wonder why they use the burgundy a lot. Have you noticed that he uses the burgundy? Yeah. Yeah, it'd be something I'd I'd like to ask Jeffrey more about uh, the colors he used and why. I'm not sure if there's too heavy a symbolism in it, but it may just be he wanted a particularly European look, and it kind of gives that. Um, and the color works great on John David Washington, who who just looks amazing throughout. Um, oh yes, and he's uh, by the he's Denzel Washington's son. If anybody doesn't know, a lot of yeah, people didn't him. know that apparently. I didn't until about two weeks before watching the film. I didn't put two and two together. Um, yeah, well, I saw Black Klansman. Um, oh, yeah. And and so I, it, so when I saw that movie, I didn't know he was his son, which is a great movie. And the costumes yeah. of that are really fun, by the way. Uh, I watched it actually in prep, preparation for the Oscars because I, um, I, I, I thought it was the design was really great. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. He, so, he doesn't look that much like Denzel Washington. I mean, Denzel no. Washington is a big guy and he's... John is, is is he's only an inch taller than me. He's like five nine, so he's not a big bloke. Um, and I always see Daniel Washington as being a big guy. That's why I didn't put two and two together. I felt like such an idiot. I'm like, oh yeah, Washington, that would make some sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so South London reseller says that maybe uh, Michael Caine couldn't be on the location. That's quite possible. They might have just done a split yeah. screen. There's a lot of movie magic in this anyway. There's quite a bit of movie magic. Well, there, there is, but. Um, a lot of it is actually, uh, I mean, there's no green screen in the movie. There's very little computer effects. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot practical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, pretty much everything in it, I think, is done practically. I mean, the, the, it's not really a spoiler for anyone who's probably seen it, the trailer, the, the 747 crashing in uh, to the airport terminal was a real 747 crashing into uh, an airport terminal. And yeah. The cars that are getting bounced out of the way are real cars. You know, it's uh, it's it, that's why why I think I found it incredibly thrilling. It's just knowing that most of what you're seeing, if not practically everything you're seeing, is actually shot was shot on screen. I mean, that is exciting. Um, Absolutely, old school movies. Uh, my friend Justin wants to know if thicker ties are back in style. He he wants to get some free advice from a fashion guru. <laughs> <laughs> I. They they do they run the uh, the gamut they go round and round and round. Um, I'm not. I, I wouldn't say that the people are doing a big thick. I mean, does it mean the knot? Is it the big? Is it yeah. The do big you mean the knot, knot, Justin? Yeah, like a okay. like a Windsor. Oh, Windsor. Windsor. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Um, well, judging from what Bond's wearing in the next film as well, I'm still. I'm saying they're probably not coming back just yet. Okay. Um, I think the skinny tie thing is is dead and buried, but. Like a half Windsor, I think, is probably 
going to be the next step. We're hoping we'd be half Windsor in it for a little bit. I think. Yeah, half Windsor. Um, which is oh, what most I think what most people wear. Most people, most suits, I think, wear half Windsors. Yeah. yeah. I actually got into a fight with someone about the Windsor not. <laughs> Because he was calling it a win. I don't remember he was calling it a double Windsor. I'm like, no, it's not a double Windsor. <laughs> oh, it's a Windsor. <laughs> the clothing community, are, especially men, are very, very fussy on details. And they will yes. argue with you till the cows come on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so this, so this yeah. is his suit. This is the one I think that um, Kat responds to. She says, okay, you've got the suit. Yeah. You've got the tie. You've got the watch. You've got now the shoe. what are you going to do? Yeah. The shoes. Is that what she says? I don't I'm know. Exactly. The shoes, yeah. Um, but yeah, I love I, I love it. It's not my favorite um yeah. suit in it, but I, I it's it's the one that needed to happen next. I mean that is that tie purple? It's kind of a maroon, I think. Oh maybe maybe purple. Uh, maybe purple. Yeah, I mean, can you that color combination is just beautiful. Um let me I can probably uh, do a zero in on that here. Can you can you do a thing? I, I can do I may be able to there. Oh, there we it are. Is purple, oh, yeah. I think. Oh, yes, it, it's it's just it's proper Cadbury purple. It's lovely. It's yeah. and, and nice pocket skin, square. Um, yeah, and but with his skin tone as well, it's mm -hmm. see like that that really takes that into uh, incorporates that as well because obviously his dark skin tone. Like if I wore that, um, I would it would wash me out. I'd look ridiculous. I don't like a ghost. But against his skin tone, it looks so good and pops beautifully and um, it's just it's the one that needed to happen it was the next suit we needed to go oh okay so yeah he definitely found the tailor then and he does that great line in it do you remember he says something um he says i could recommend a tailor michael kane's character and uh the protagonist so as you know you you british don't have a monopoly on snobbery um and Payne says no, no it's more of a controlling interest I'm like, <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> like, yeah, um, now he calls it a shark skin. Is that a particular type of fabric? Yeah, it is. Yeah, silk? it's a particular. I wasn't type familiar of, with the name. Yeah, it's a particular type of silk. It will. Oh, okay. Under, under different lighting, it will sort of reflect differently. Um, it's a little like Shantung silk, um, but it, yeah, it's beautiful. It's little, long. It has like some slubs. Then they look a little bit of slub. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. it does. Yeah, you can. Okay. You can just about you can sort of just it. yeah, just barely see. Um, now, one of the things I did read, and I don't know if you saw this in the Esquire interview, is that he mentioned he had a different tailor, which I thought was so clever. He had a different mm -hmm. tailor for the three male leads. That what I'm do you think really, about that idea of doing that? Now that I'm really interested in, and I want to ask him about because I know his regular tailor is Dennis Kim who did the suits for Inception, and he's used him uh, many times before. He, he Jeffrey loves him. And I find it really odd that he would use three different tailors. I want to know who they are. Um, I doubt there'd be name name tailors, as in designers or tailors that that don't work in the industry in some way. Um, I thought it's, it's an interesting idea. Um, I don't know if it's strictly necessary, but I need to speak to him about it. Um, I want to know who's done the other suits. Um, yeah, I know because maybe I, I think for like for instance the oligarch he wanted to have him maybe be a little bit less fitted, like um, yeah, more more to his age really, his, and his more build. his age, and, um, as opposed to you know obviously the um, <clears throat> the protagonist who's very very slim and fitted. Yeah, this yeah. is my favorite suit here that he wears that I'm showing here. The protagonist. Ah, the the little espresso suit as I. I love it. it. I yeah. love it. I love. I love the contrasting vest. I think that's yeah. really. Yeah, I do. I a waistcoat, that. as you Brits would say. Yeah, it's a waistcoat. <laughs> to me, that that was kind of a daring thing because, from a European, maybe more of a British standpoint, it's a little bit of a wedding thing. A lot of people when they get married wear contrast uh, waistcoats with suits, um, and it can look a bit like that, but it doesn't look remotely like that. Um, but I think it's quite daring to to do what he did there. Um, it's, but it's so specific. It's so specific to John David. Um, and like you said, the contrast just works so well, especially when you've got the, uh, the, the vault guy, I don't know who he is. Um, and, uh, Robert Pattinson next to him. Uh, I yes. mean, look, you've got three very different looks there. And I think that might be one of the reasons he did it. Um, is that, I mean, a vault guy has got a nice suit on nicely fitted, slim, David Washington with his very specific look. And then, of course, we've got Neil, who's just my absolute favorite in the movie, in his slightly slovenly 
double-breasted suit. Let's all hail the return of the double-breasted suit. I love it. Yeah, it's funny because I did it. I did a. I worked on a show years ago. It was kind of like Suits, like it was a, like a law show, and uh, they made a point of never putting a young person in a double-breasted suit. Mm -hmm. Only older gentlemen would be in a double-breasted suit. Interesting. And uh, the younger men could wear. Uh, I don't even think they put waistcoats on them, I think. So I always thought that was an interesting thing. So immediately when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's kind of an older man thing. I just yeah. have that in my brain now. But I love it on him. It really works for me. It's generally, yeah, it has been used as shorthand for older close gentlemen. Up. Yeah, there's um, a close-up of it there. Yeah, it is. That's great. I think the first time I really saw it being used again in movies was with the first Kingsman film. The, uh, Which is Aaron amazing. Clips. <laughs> yeah, which is extraordinary. And she went all out, Aaron Phillips, and basically put everybody, or the Kingsmen in general, virtually all of them wear a double-breasted suit, um, which was daring. I mean, what they did that was different, and it's not necessarily the case here, the suits in Kingsmen are extremely fitted. They're double-breasted, but they're very fitted. They're not like this sort of 1980s banker-style double-breasted suit. They're more of a young man's version of the suit. Um, and Neil's is slightly more old fashioned, which I love. Um, the thing is with a double breasted suit, yeah, picture here. it looks so good on a slim guy, a guy as slim as him. Um, it works so well because it actually gives him a little bit of a little bit of bulk. You know, actually, uh, they used to say, you know, if you're a bigger guy, don't wear a double breasted suit because it will pad you out, make you look a bit bigger. But on Neil, who's just uh, Robert Pattinson there, who's so slim, it actually define i mean he's got great shoulders it really defines him very well so he looks like i say it's not slovenly but he just looks a little bit more you know he's a little bit go with the flow which is his character in the film obviously he's very much like that yeah so like what do you think of like um you know because obviously you know when we find out at the end of the movie that there is a history between these two characters between neil mm -hmm. and the protagonist don't want to give away too many. what do you yeah. think about the how do you think they did with setting up the contrast between the two characters i mean i love that about you know there's yeah. this really great contrast between them. obviously their physicalities are different but also their clothing is quite different it's it's very different it's it, I, I think the idea uh, and i think it actually is mentioned in the esquire uh, interview. It, it's a little bit like uh, Tom Hardy's character in Inception, who Jeffrey envisaged as being like uh, an expat uh, living in, in in Inception. He's living in like Mombasa, um, and his his clothing's a little bit. It's a little bit of a mishmash of things. Very relaxed. Um, you know, he's not buttoned up, you know, the weather's warm, you know, he's very sort of more that sort of expat about town thing. And I think with, with Neil, who, who is his contact in India, and we assume probably lives in India or certainly spends a lot of his time there, his clothes are looser, you know, cause of the climate and just his, I mean, when we first see him, he's like orders, orders a vodka and he's sitting there and he's kind of relaxed and chilled and, and, uh, the, the, the the protagonist is yeah, more buttoned up, more serious, and more European. And I think that's what we're, I mean, there's no better romance or buddy story than two people that don't necessarily seem like they're going to gel together straight away. It's done in, it's any kind of buddy thing. You can go back to like Lethal Weapon with Danny Glover as the, you know, straight laced suited cop and Mel Gibson in his, you know, his, his, denim jeans and his, his check shirt and his big hair and you sort of put the two together oh, those, those two are never going to get on um, but of course they do they they, they they gel despite these differences and i think that's one of the really great things about the relationship which is my absolute favorite thing in a movie between neil and the protagonist is that they do come from different worlds but ultimately have the same goal and the same beliefs and i think that works really well for because they do spend quite a lot of time together in the movie um so to, they do need to be established as very different looking on screen we need to uh, even when they're wearing their fatigues in a sort of more of the action scenes they they are separated quite a lot in terms of their costume i think yeah oh no absolutely uh, uh south london reseller says double-breasted a nod to film noir perhaps yeah always i think um yeah. it always will be uh, uh definitely a, a humphrey bogart thing um, it, you always will see it. And of course, 
Nolan makes a lot of noir films, neo noir. I mean, you're looking mm. at Memento, his first like big proper movie. I think it was his first full yeah. length. Um, you know, that's a neo noir. He he likes to lean towards that. I think so. Yeah, there's, there's definitely that there. And of course, there's the whole James Bond thing that um, he wanted to reference. I think James Bond. This is Nolan's James Bond movie. He'll never do a Bond movie. I don't think. It was um, funny though. I read uh, this interview uh, that apparently you know, that he's a huge James Bond fan and mm -hmm. Christopher Nolan is. And, but he avoided watching any Bond films before yeah. making this because he didn't want to be influenced by it. And I thought that was really cool because it mm -hmm. sounds like him and his family, um, they, they spend a lot of time watching Bond films. They gather around and mm -hmm. that's, so I thought that was a really interesting thing. And then Jeffrey said he wanted to have that feeling of like a, maybe a Sean Connery Bond, not yeah. necessarily a Daniel Craig Bond. Uh, the more of, you know, more classic Bond, yeah. but without it, the him looking like he's Bond, which I thought is really an interesting way to describe I, it. I think if that if that was the brief, then I can't think of any better way to hit it than like this. I mean, he yeah, it's a Bond vibe, but pretty much most of the things you see, certainly John David Washington wearing, and definitely um, Robert Pattinson, you, Bond would not wear. Um, yeah, you know, they're, they're, like they're, that shawl collar. Which oh, I love. The school was, I love this jacket. Now, yeah, I think this is actually mentioned in the interview as well. And when I spoke to Jeffrey uh, uh, a couple of months ago, we revisited Inception. Um, he said that Chris Nolan doesn't like flourishes much. He doesn't like fussy bits. And I know he had to persuade him to let him use the shawl collar just because it, it works for Robert Pattinson's character. And it does. It's just a little edge. And, you know, with, I don't know how like spoilery we're going to be here, but there's it's kind of difficult to really say. But in there, there's a future connection mm -hmm. with um, Neil Robert Pattinson's character. There's a few. There, there's definitely a future connection, and I think a shawl collar will always have a slightly futuristic look about it, and it kind of gives him almost like a man from the future vibe, which he kind of is in the movie without saying too much. Um, I don't think I've really yeah. spoken anything about it, but it's a nice little touch, a nice little futuristic touch, I thought. Um, there's a few comments in the chat I'm going to get to in a moment, but one of the oh, things yeah. I was reading is that Jeffrey was talking about how he did break down Robert's costumes and, you know, like doing the putting rocks in the pockets and things like that, just to give it oh, a yeah. bit more of a saggy feel, right? Which I think I they achieved that. beautifully. Make yeah. the cuffs look a little bit less crisp. So when he they're standing, mm -hmm. and then also that, that scarf. I had so many people commentating about the scarf. It's a scarf movie. It's such it's, a scarf movie. And it feels very Robert Pattinson too. It feels like yeah. something he probably would be like, yeah, I love this. Yeah, I, I can imagine. And I'm definitely going to ask Jeffrey this, but during the, the, the fittings, he would have been like, I'm going to try a scarf. And he's like, yeah, this is this is me. And and like like you said, the, the I mean, you can see in that picture there, the cuffs. I think a button's actually undone on the cuff. I, I don't think his shirt button is actually done no. on the cuff. No, he's wearing French cuffs, but there's actually, I have a picture of him without he is, on. Isn't he? Are they buttoned? They're not buttoned. They're not. They? So no. it's sort of like, ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I love that. It's very him. It's very his character. You know, uh, he yeah, so here's a picture of him. I have a picture of just the shirt only, and he's just wearing it completely unbuttoned. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the, that's later on, isn't it? Yeah, that's his very... I like, yeah, you can see the whole sleeve is just, just hanging like, and then he's, but, but then when he puts the jacket on, he just sort of like tucks it up. Tucks it up <laughs> like yeah. hand tucks it. That. So it's, it was very like almost method. Yeah, I, I love that. I think it's it's very much a a, a summer look that I oh, tried yeah. after seeing the movie and we had those few last hot days. Um, I tried doing it myself. I had like a, a sports jacket on and a, and a long sleeve shirt and I let it hang out. And it kind of worked, but... This is when, you know, things in the movies don't necessarily translate because my arms are quite short. So the sleeve was hanging out, but it was pretty much covering my whole hand. So I'm walking down the road with like my sleeves flapping outside thinking I'm, you know, Neil in Tenet and everyone else is just look, it looks like I borrowed like, you know, my brother's shirt or something and it's too big for yeah. me. <laughs> uh, 30 days uh, he's got a grooming channel and he did, he's got one of those beautiful mustaches as well um, uh, he's saying I like the grey jacket there without the little wing cuts uh, mm -hmm. or whatever on the folded over part I'm not sure what he's referring to do you mean that the collar is sort of flipped up at the back or 
I'm not sure. Because it is turned up slightly at the back, isn't it? It's turned up slightly at the back. Yeah. Uh, not, not uh, and again, that might have just been the actor. Well, no, it, it was probably styled for him. But let me just see if I can close in a bit on it, guys. See, and you can even see there's a nice texture on the fabric as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Everything really has can. a beautiful, a beautiful and texture to it. And the size of the watch, which is way too big. Oh, and yeah. it, <laughs> It's great, you know. It's, just, it's too much, and that's that's why it's good, you know. Why, his, uh, why, someone why. was saying he has a PhD. That was his graduation gift. <laughs> <laughs> you know, his parents gave him. It's Congratulations, a watch, son! So it's a it's a very nice gift. I mean, it's a very expensive watch. <laughs> I, you can see his body language there, there Neil. There in that other shot you had on a second ago. Sorry, I made me zip back and forth. No, I'm having, sorry, you know what it is? It's me. I'm having issues. I, I We were talking about this earlier in the stream, but, or, you know, before we got going that I was, you know, I might be having some issues getting uh, the technical part. I got this window thing here. Let me see if I can, oops. Oh, oh yeah, we're, we're back. We're back Did again. Do you want to be on this? We have one, no, it was the one, the one afterwards with, um, uh, the fixer dude, whose name I can't remember. Oh, fixer dude. Yes. That's where we are. Um, you can see Robert Pattinson on the top there, like his body language. He's like slightly hunched. Um, and it's a one button fit as well. It's definitely mm -hmm. a one button. It's an unusual Yeah, fit. yeah, exactly. Which again, I think is that sort of, that could be a modern thing, yeah. having a right. one button. And we got to um, talk about Pixar dude, who, whose name I don't, I don't even remember hearing in the film. Um, but the, the guy from yesterday, who I just, I love, I love his costumes in it. Um, it's, yeah, so let me just let's just go to that then here. Yeah, we, we got a lapel. Where is he? Oh, there he is. He's down. He's down there the at the bottom. But I, also, bottom. I, have, I have a bigger picture of him. He um, he's fab. His whole look. It's a more of a practical look. Yes. Um, he's you know well he's the you know the guy that gets things done, um, and it, it's a tiny bit seventies as well with that. There it is. There he is. Sorry. Yeah, there he is. Oh, there he is. Yeah, especially at the top there with. I love his body language. He's just going, he's any little guy and he's got his hands there like Hi, this. Mish Patel is his real name, but I don't know what his character name is. But no. yeah, if anybody's seen Yesterday, he's the star of Yesterday. He's brilliant. Um, and, and then he's so good in this. So it's sort of funny because Christopher, who um, from the Umbrella Academy, another Christopher, he mm -hmm. had a huge vintage collection like um, that he amassed. And it looks like also Jeffrey has a vintage collection that he's amassed over the years. It seems like yeah. these costume designers are like, I have to... I have to keep yeah. this. So he had that jacket in his like stock, the one that we see here on Hymish. Um, really? And That's he decided, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use this jacket. Isn't look at that little like peplum. Or whatever I would argue it. that a vintage jacket, uh, possibly a 70s one with the, mm -hmm. with, with the, the collar the way it is. Um, and I just, I love it with the jeans that are quite high and it could even be a, a vintage shirt. And it's just, his look just works so well against them. It tells you everything you need to know about these people just looking at that. That's the action guy. That's the sort of uh, Neil's the kind of put things yeah. together guy, the, the well-traveled man. And uh, um, the protagonist is, you know, the serious spy. You know, he's doing Yeah, like, like I, I'm not sure 100% by this, but I feel that Hymish might have put a bit of weight on for this role. Like he's got, looks like yeah, he's got a little I bit of a gut. Yeah, I think so. Because he's, he's, you know, he's a techie, right? So he's, you know, he's probably drinking beer. Yeah, you imagine. That's kind of why I liked about it yeah, with the beard, you know, which kind of covers yeah. a lot of it. But Whereas yeah, if you see him in yesterday, he's a lot yeah. more, he's a lot tiny. more lanky, I think. Yeah. He's, uh, he looks really short here. Well, he is. He must he be. Does. He's, he's short. Well, you're other saying guy. John David is short, right? Well, he's, five, he's yeah, he's only 5'9", which is, as far as I know, which is a fan inch shorter than me. That's, that's not tall. <laughs> yeah it's below especially, average for it's below average for like a hollywood actor yeah. type i mean especially next to uh let me see if i can do there Pat or uh yeah uh, how tall is pattison is he he's probably six feet at least um, he's probably a six foot guy yeah but he's slouching down he's here slouching so it's, down I, so it's yeah. giving him that it's giving him a bit more of um <laughs> but yeah i mean like in the, in the scenes with with the protagonist and cat um and she's just towering over yeah, him yeah, that's so everything. We want to talk about. We can talk about Cat. We, we've got to. We've got to mention Cat. Yeah. Oh, um, sorry. There she is. Okay. So there she is. That's one of her looks. Um, yeah. So it was interesting. Again, with the um, the interview that Jeffrey did with Esquire, mm -hmm. 
talking about, I guess when he originally approached her character, uh, Nolan was like, no, no, that's actually not really what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a little bit off. He was kind of envisioning her like an English rose. Yeah. So when you yeah. see this, do you, I mean, Lady Diana, it's sort of, you know, a lot of people have been doing those comparisons perhaps. Yeah, I, I, I could see it. Um, I could see the English rose thing mm -hmm. to a degree. I mean, he didn't, he's kept her look more buttoned up and rigid than a sort of traditional English rose look, which would be a lot more flowing hemlines, I think. She's very, okay. I think that's to re represent her character. She's very buttoned up and held in and pretty much on, 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 on the, the, the brink of exploding uh, throughout the film. Um, and I think that's why her clothing is so rigid, so tight, so buttoned up. Um, and he just, obviously, he just completely embraced her height. Um, oh, yeah, look at her heels. I mean, she's, yeah, she's six, I think it was six three, wasn't it? In yes, flat feet. In and so goodness knows how tall she is there. I mean, she she towers over Washington in a lot of the scenes, and it works. It it kind of, it works. It, it gives. I like that it gives um, the protagonist a bit more of a, a, a confidence about him. It, it's it's not like he has to be the tallest guy in the room. He's kind of you know, it's part of his a cheeky appeal because he is kind of cheeky in it. He gets a lot of... Oh, yeah. He's mind. actually... And he's actually really funny. Like some of the, the you know, the little banter between him and Neil, it, it's it's hilarious. Yeah. It's cute. And it's... Yeah. Uh, you know, when, when he's Stick getting... Stick with uh, me here. Like when they're doing the, pl the plan and he's like, okay, keep up. Yeah, keep up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, mean, so the guy, I searched him um, when, uh, for the dinner scene with Sata and he's... Oh, like, Yes. That actually, by the way, I don't have a picture of that, but Jeffrey said that was his favorite outfit that he wore. Oh, that is glorious. It's yeah. so Italian. I, I don't have a picture. Yeah, it's it's such an Italian look. It's gorgeous. Um, it's my probably one of my favorites, actually. It just works so well in the lighting. Um, but yeah, yeah, he just, another polo shirt, uh, again. So many polo shirts. I just. A lot. Yeah. They talked about that in G, the GQ article, I think, that there's a lot of polo shirts. Yeah, I think it was. But when was. When did the, when was the film originally supposed to open? It was a summer opening. I kind of wonder if it, if it was hoping it maybe it might take off a little bit as a kind of a look. Um, but of course, yeah. I don't, I'm not even, I guess not even how many people have seen it. Yeah, well, it's funny because I'm just I'm doing um, I've been watching Lovecraft Country. I don't know if you've had a chance to see that, which takes place in the fifties. Yeah, so many knit polos. <laughs> like, right, I'm like. Oh my gosh, so many knit polos on all the characters, um, but t-shirts too, you know, like- Yeah, the, it's such a look, it really it is. It is a look, yes. Very specific. Um, so Alison Dredge says, Google says Hymish and John are 5'9", oh. and Rob is 6'1", and Elizabeth is 6'3". So quite the height, <laughs> that would be really hard to shoot that eh, as a, as a uh, uh, cinematographer. I, I think, yeah, the only way to, to go with it is to, just go with it, um, you know, and uh, like I said, just embrace her her height, which they often try and hide in movies, I think. Yeah, um, she does have one, are, she uh, has one outfit that she wears where she's wearing flats, this one here. Oh my goodness, yeah, she still looks like she's, I don't like this outfit, to be honest with you. I think I don't just, like the length of that dress. Just, it makes, oh. The fabric just looks, I mean, it's probably just, this is not, a, this isn't from the yeah. film, this is just someone took it, but it, she just looks really washed out to me. Yeah, I actually agree, and it, yeah. it doesn't look like some somebody of her status would wear. It's not. Yeah, it's certainly not my favorite either. I mean, it's not a great photo, obviously, but it isn't. No. I, gosh, I don't like that length. Um, it, yeah. it doesn't work on her at all. Um, but I, yeah, having her. I mean, I first one of the first things I saw um, Elizabeth uh, Debeckin was uh, Great Gatsby. That was, I think, her like big breakthrough role. She was, I can't remember her character's name, but she Which was. I'm embarrassed to say I haven't seen. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know, I know, it's awful. I haven't seen oh. it. And I'm reading the book too. I'm reading the book and I was, yeah. For shame. You need to get, you need I to know, see I have it. to see I need it. to see your, your views on this. We, we need to chat about them. Okay, film. we will. Um, it's, but she, she her character in that, she's a, a, like a, a golf pro, I think, um, and a bit of a sort of society girl. And she's so tall and wears the long trousers in it a lot. And I was kind of worried they wouldn't really know what to do with her after it. But she's had some interesting roles. But really what stuck out for me is when she was in The Man From U.N.C.L.E., um, which I don't know. Oh, she's think. in that. I love that movie so That's much. An amazing movie. And I she wish they would make like, a sequel for that. Oh, everybody. We're all, you know, everybody yes. wants a sequel. It's, it's just make the thing already. You know, don't, 
he goes off like Guy Ritchie's going off making Aladdin and stuff. And it's like, D -d -d do that later. Do it. We, we want the sequel. Okay. Absolutely. Just want, the sequel. Because such a she, great cast. Oh, she's wonderful in that. But I mean, she's, you know, she's standing next to, you know, Henry Cavill and uh, uh, what's his name? The big guy. Um, oh, I can't think of his name. The one in social. Uh, yes, um, Army, uh, Hammer. Army, Army Hammer. Hammer. Yeah, Army. he's so good yeah. in that. The, he, the, I love him and and the and the female in that. Like their their relationship in that is so fun. Oh, it, well, isn't that just like one of the cutest it, relationships? It's so cute. Ever. It's really cute. When and she, most, yeah, yeah like, you don't want to you don't want to dance, but you do want to wrestle, and they just it's hilarious. It's such a good. And okay. Henry Cavill's American accent in that is so good. Course, like I, yeah. I didn't even know. I was just like, because I didn't really know him that well at that point. Um, yeah. But my favorite movie with or show with her is, and I talked to you about this, The Night Manager. She oh, yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Well, the whole thing is amazing. And if yeah. anybody in the chat hasn't seen the night manager you have to watch it it's so i mean did you it's a tv series here it's a TV I don't know series. Sorry. It's, it's on i think it's on amazon stuff now but it is yes. um, it wasn't what i expected at all but she you got to be honest a character in this is certainly Very not a million miles away yeah not a million miles away yeah she, she's with, with another horrific man um, but it's very good it's it's an old school spy thing with tom hiddleston looking amazing in it um, anyone who hasn't seen that, I, I think I kept putting it off because I thought it was going to be a, a lot different to what it was. And when I watched it, I was like, why have I waited so long to watch this? It's wonderful. I hope I do a sequel. Oh, I, oh, absolutely. I did hear there might be a sequel yeah. in the works. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm excited. And then the other thing I have to watch is um, that I think I asked you about it or I was tweeting pictures about it was uh, – it was another spy thriller, spy spy series for that was done. Um, was it? Uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called. But the woman who's an actress, and and then they hire her. Uh, I think uh, Israel oh. hires her. Um, Why well, that's so? I'm surely someone's gonna know. It's the same. This. Oh, sorry guys. Okay, it'll come to me. Yeah, um, someone. Else. But I'm... the styling in that looks looks. It's Florence Pugh stars in it. She's. The, oh, the, 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 Is it? Uh, uh, I wrote about it. Um, because oh, I, I saw, know. I saw. You know how I found out about it. I was watching an interview with Alexander Skarsgård, and he yeah. was talking about it. And I'm like, "What's this? What's this movie he's talking about? This series?" Yeah, and he it, plays her um, love, the, the love interest. So if anybody knows what I'm talking about, it's yeah, a it, television series. It's a spy you thriller. Seen it. um, I haven't seen it, but I'm watching. But the I the little I, drama girl. The little the, drummer girl. The little drummer girl. But anyway, I was like, wow, this story sounds really familiar. And I realized that I saw the original with Diane Keaton. She played that the Florence Pugh character in the original. I didn't even know that. It was shot no in the 70s, though. So I was like, why is this? But anyways, oh, my God, the costumes in that are yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I've got it on my website, but uh, it's full of spoilers. There's a, a, a pretty long article on there about the use of color. But... Yeah, don't if you haven't seen it don't go yeah, and read i'll it. watch it and then i'll go read your yeah. article it, do it then. Yeah. Um, so before we wrap up and do the trivia question um mm -hmm. do you want to just have a little a quick little chat about um is there anything else you want to say about this movie i know you love it is there anything you else you want to add about the costumes on this i i will just say as well like because we talked an awful lot about the, the tailoring and that type of costuming in it i also i love the the fatigues and things they wear oh, yeah, there's of, pictures of that yeah it's it's clearly it's it must have been really difficult for for jeffrey to do this without making it look dull on screen um but it, he, he he really comes up with this really cool like black outfit and the, the masks which i think sort of changed slightly throughout i mean the mask that i had on at the beginning of this um Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. this is from the fun. opera. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is from the opera. The other thing is because he had to come up with so many different like looks. Yeah. Like, so this is one group, for instance, mm -hmm. that he originally works with. And then and then there's you know, then there's all the tactical mm -hmm. gear. Yeah, the ending. He I don't know if you have a shot of that. There's one of him, he wears a, a different sort of tactical outfit at the end, which feels like the natural progression from this outfit. Um it's because it's you know, normally these types of clothing, they're, they're not as fitted and generally as. There's just like, cool. there's Robert Pattinson yeah. wearing just, you know, some sort of minimal. Look at his He does style, style it. Oh, it's, look at it. It just looks so cool. Um, Let me just find here. I know I have them in like a little. 
Where is it? Sorry, guys. I love his, uh, and that's the fireman's uniform that uh, the protagonist is wearing, isn't it? So you, you, they're separated. Oh, here. On that. here it is. Here's some of oh, the other ones. The top. Yeah. yeah, the, the top. So they got the harness one, which is very cool. And they're just the wearing harness. it over their regular clothes. Oh, I'll just throw it over top what? of my clothes. That is one thing. I, I did Scale find. down a building. <laughs> it's kind of weird, isn't it? I was like, they sort of come up with a plan. And I thought, you know, at least like, change into a T-shirt and a pair of jeans. Oh, no, you're going to do it in your suit. Okay, fine. They, they must have been really up against it time-wise. And it was like, no, dude, we gotta. We don't have time to go shopping. We've, we've got to just get these harnesses on and fly up the building. Um, I love that. I love um, 30, 30 Days is saying that that, that uh, fire jacket is not puffy enough. I can't remember the context of that, though. I don't know that he's wearing it as a he, fireman. Well, he, He's supposed to look like a fireman. He's, um, uh, I'm trying to think of that particular, that's the car bit, the car chase scene. Yes. Where he's, he's, he's a fireman climbing, he's uh, climbing on top of the fire truck. I mean, I, I guess a lot of that has to do with the fact that there's going to be a lot of wind under it and things like that. It can't yeah. billow out too much. Um, everything in, in movies in terms of uniforms is always going to be a little bit more fitted than anything ever is in real life. There's not one costume designer I've spoken to who's done a uniform that hasn't said, yeah, we clipped it in a bit, you know, just to make it look a bit sleeker. Yeah. And in the interview I read, he did, he did say that they did that. He said, I, it sounded like they had like giant, they probably had an entire wall full of just reference photos of yeah, different types of tactical that. wear. And then they probably just, then he said he did, he took it and he kind of slendered it up. One of the things I was going to say that this one here, uh, I don't know if you've seen this, but there's this concept artist named Ralph McQuarrie who did oh, the yeah. original Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. This reminds me of the original concept art of Darth Vader, this, <laughs> this tactical gear here. Oh, the, gosh, yeah, it does like 19, it. You know, with the World yeah. War II helmet and the, and the hoses and everything and the mask. I'd love to know how much came from that again. So... <laughs> Oh, that's just me movie. you can ask him just say i have a friend who's really into star wars she wants to <laughs> I mean, it's, you know i mean and darth vader did have like you know it's a salet uh it's a salet type helmet so that is a fair thing but i just um i was just like oh my god that looks like the ralph mccrory darth vader it does i have seen that and it certainly does i just hope it is i hope it's something he goes interesting you point that out but he's probably just gonna go i have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> yeah he'll probably be like i don't i don't know uh, there's just a famous picture, uh, concept art of that. Um, now before we, uh, uh so yeah, um, yeah, 30 days saying the style is wrong. Um, <laughs> who cares about the style? It's whether it looks good or not. It doesn't matter if it's correct. This is, that's a whole, costumes. that's a whole big discussion right there. Isn't it? I mean, for God's sakes, people never wear hats in movies. No, <laughs> the directors are terrified of them. They're terrified of hats. Uh, the entire two seasons of Game of Thrones, not one person in north of the wall wore a hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd be on kid your ears warm, you know. It's <laughs> um yeah, he's 30 days says uh that tack gear is definitely part of Darth Vader, though he's saying that. So, um yeah. Uh, but anyways, okay, so one of the things I just quickly wanted to talk to you about, because we did uh, have sort of a chat about this earlier, about the Bond mm -hmm. feel, and mm -hmm. I finally got to see the Bond trailer. Do you want to just, can we talk about it just a few minutes before we wrap yeah. up and do the giveaway? Yeah, yeah that's... Um, so that's going to be think? the last Daniel Craig Bond, my understanding. Is that true? You're a British person. You probably yeah. have more of a... Um, I, I, yeah, I can't see him coming back to it, especially after this. I mean, he's going to be too old, but it, this whole, you know, day barkle that's been going on with when they're going to release it, and now we've moved it to April. Um, I think even with the Bond fandom, we're in, um, we're in a sort of danger of people not really caring that much by the time the film turns up. Um, and I'm sure the James Bond fandom would, would scream me down for that. But it, it's hard to keep people motivated for another seven months pretty much um, before the film comes out um, we've just all we've seen so far and it can't really show us that much more um, looks wise I'm more excited for this one than I have been for the others uh, certainly the last two because I haven't really enjoyed what Daniel Cray's been wearing in those I, I, I know this gets brought up loads and it's a debate a lot of people have but his suits don't fit him they just don't fit. They're too small and he looks ludicrous in a lot of them um, it, one of them in the one film he looks incredible in and everything fits perfectly is Quantum of Solace, which is not the most popular Bond film at all, but everything fits in perfectly in that. Um, and I just think after that, his clothes just got, his suits just got sillier and sillier 
And in this, so that's like, interesting you, know, you should say that because I see I as a person in my 50s, I always think that suits look really, really small on people. Not in this yeah. movie, though. But a lot of yeah. times I'm like, oh, that looks way too tight. And people go, no, 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 that's the fashion. I'm like, OK, OK, fine. I'll, as an old person, you know, OK, boomer, I'll just back out of the room. But, <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but, uh, but so that's interesting you should say that. I mean, and, and Henry Cavill, we can give him a little bit of room. Like we can give him a little bit of, uh, you know, because Obviously, I haven't seen Enola um, Holmes, but, you know, apparently it's quite a challenge to put a suit on that poor guy, right? <laughs> it's, yeah, I know Brian Johnson, like, she, uh, who did Uncle, um, yeah, she said it's not, because he was, it either just started Superman or just come off it, and he was huge. Um, and, you know, it's, it is really hard, to, but if you, if you want to see how to do it, look how they did it in that. I mean, they did a great job uh, in that. You, he doesn't need to look um daniel craig like he's bursting out of all these clothes and in the new one it looks a bit better he's wearing a lot okay. more casual gear but it looks a lot more tack gear um which for me works a lot better it's a different costume designer so i think it's a costume designer who works with danny boyle a lot i think she did sunshine oh okay uh slumdog millionaire i think yeah i can't call her name at the moment um so i'm i'm ex excited as far as what we can see of it um, See, I always thought Tom Ford was dressing him personally, so that wasn't the case. That's okay. uh, I very. I mean, you. I only know him on the people I've I've spoken to, but from my understanding, it, they're made in Tom Ford's factory. But he has. I mean, you, all you need to do is look at the suits. They don't fit like Tom Ford suits fit. Um, they're not Tom Ford suits. They're Tom Ford suits in name only, but they, they don't fit like Tom Ford suits. His suits are actually, it's certainly a few years ago, leaned quite more into, a little bit more into the 70s. And the suits on Daniel Craig were a lot more 60s in style. Um, so really, I, I, I know it's a, it's, it's a marketing thing. It's a money thing. Uh, I just never see Tom Ford as the best fit for Bond, never was. Um, you're better yeah. off with, I mean, <laughs> Timothy Everest did the suits for uh, under, Joanna Johnson's uh, uh, instruction for the man from Uncle, and I think they worked a lot better. But you know, there's more money in Tom Ford, I guess. So that's where it comes in. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. I had no idea. Um, what is silly are Roger Moore's dad loafers in the Bond films? <laughs> What's that? Um, uh, she's saying Roger Moore's dad loafers in the Bond films. I never was a big Roger Moore Bond. I love Roger. Oh, was, do you? Oh, yeah, maybe I mean, Moonraker. I'm in my age group, so I'm 43. And he yeah. was kind of on telly all the time. The Bond films were always, he, always his ones on telly. Um, and I think just of that particular time, I just loved his like wink and the fact that the, he would, they were just ludicrous. Um, that, so I always, and I like some of Roger's clothing is a little out there, but some of it is beautifully tailored. Um, it fits in perfectly, even, you know, the, the big flares and all that. I know that, but oh, yeah. look at the clothes. They're, they're really nicely made. Um, it wears a lot of nice stuff. Not everything. Not I'll have to check out the dad lovers. Okay, so I think I might have a I, I think I might have a question. This it's yeah, not gonna be too hard for the trivia. So what we're gonna do, guys, before we end the stream today, uh, so as I mentioned at the top of the stream, we're gonna be giving away this beautiful hardbound book, Fashion and Film. Here's the back of it. It's got Catherine Deneuve on the back. Yeah. And there's a James Bond there. It's actually um it's coming out in paperback next year. But oh it know. is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so little, there's a Daniel Craig Bond. Uh, wow, she freaking gorgeous this girl here i know, I know I yeah know. they should have brought um, her back on the other girl yeah she looks like a lola uh, was this a lola brigida gina lola brigida yeah definitely yeah definitely. so there's the back and there's the spine so it's a beautiful book so what we're going to do is i'm going to ask a question and then whoever answers the question first um maybe 30 days you can just uh keep you know you can keep an eye on the chat for me just to um confirm because i'm looking at it through Streamyard, so i just want to make sure okay. Yes. So I know Christopher knows the answer to this. So Christopher, don't answer. <laughs> well, you well, probably have a copy of your own book. <laughs> <laughs> I only <have> one. <laughs> you only have one copy. I know it's funny. Eh? You only have one of your own copies. Yeah, I mentioned you, you found this out. You don't get a lot of free copies. No, but. no, you don't. So what I'm going to do is I'll ship it out from Amazon. So I'm just going to ask you guys, whoever wins, uh, if you can just find me on Twitter and message me on Twitter, that's usually the best way. Just send me private message me your address and I will send that out to you. And, um, and I think it's a, it will be a wonderful prize. So the question is, this is going to be really easy. I decided just to go with something really simple. Um, okay, wait, hold on a second. 
Uh, okay. So right. in the movie, Tenet, what is the name of the John... <laughs> was John David? John... <laughs> so I don't even have this right. John David... Um, What's his first name again? <laughs> John David Washington. What is the what is the name of John David Washington's character? This is like so smooth. That was a terrible uh, delivery of my question. I, you know what? I thought I had his proper name written down. So okay, yeah. So what is the character name? We mentioned it a couple of times, probably two or three times. That, that's a good question. Is that a good one? I think it's a pretty good Make question. Make sure you have your live chat on to answer my screen wins. Yeah. Yeah. He was pretty so thirty good days. Thirty days is going to just. Um, He's going to monitor that. Anyone that can Google it if they can't remember. Yeah, I imagine that. <laughs> you know, Google the answer. Yeah, the John David uh, Washington, Washington character. <laughs> who is, I'll show you a picture of him if you can't remember who I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a I feel second. really sorry for you if you've gone through all this and not really yeah. had a clue who he's he is. He's the one on the top left corner. He's the top left. And he's, he's the main smart. character. He's, he's is, the, the main dude. Okay. He's the main dude. What is his name? Yeah, it's. Uh, I was actually confused about this. I have to tell you, just as a hint to everybody, I'm reading. I, I'm reading all these articles, and I'm like, "What's? But what's his name?" And so then I yeah. had to go look it up. I'm like, "Oh, that is his name." Uh, yeah, a lot of articles have actually. Yes. His name. Devin Realness um, got it. Who's got it? Devin Realness. Excellent. Oh, Allison has a copy already. Oh, she says, I know, but I already have a copy. Oh, Allison. Okay, we. I could have given you something else. Okay, so, um, uh, so thirty days. Um, do you want to just double check that it's Devin Realness who got it? Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. So, I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. So, what if you want to just send me a message on Twitter? My my link is in the description, and I'll uh, I'll. It's just going to come directly from Amazon. Uh, Christopher, one more thing I was going to ask you. This is just I don't know if it was in the same GQ article that I sent you. They were talking about how um, they didn't, and I completely disagreed with this. Speaking of the protagonist, that they didn't find that the costumes sort of told the story of the characters. And I thought yeah. that they did an excellent job of telling the story of the characters. And, yeah. and, and and they were basically complaining that they didn't know a lot about the protagonist. But by the fact that his name is the protagonist, that sort of tells you something, doesn't it? There's very little. I, I actually, I think that that's fairly ludicrous as, as a statement. I mean, you couldn't you couldn't learn more about the characters. I mean, we, we've gone through reasons why we, we, we know about the characters just by just looking at you know, quick shots of them, you know, Neil and, and the backstory is deliberately vague. Um, and there's only so yeah. much that, I mean, I don't even know how much Jeffrey would have known as far as um, those, uh, you know, actually putting in backstories for, in terms of costume. But of course they, they progress throughout the film. They work in ways they're supposed to. And, you know, for me, I, I, I don't see what else could have been done that wouldn't have been jarring um it would have to me it would have been too jarring to to change it up too much it just yeah it has a natural flow and a natural progression oh okay sorry there has been a uh, um south london reseller apparently one instead oh i'm sorry i didn't see oh yes you did i apologize i you did answer first i apologize wow. okay yay is this, is this controversial is it gonna be uh, a no it, it seems at uh, devon realness seems to be conceding <laughs> i'm like somebody who we know who won't okay. <laughs> we're not in that country though we're in different countries so we don't <laughs> my prime minister uh is you know he's an okay guy <laughs> i don't know about your prime minister though <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> Uh, so congratulations, South London reseller. Yay. So just find me on Twitter. It's such a great, yeah, it's going to be a really great gift. I give away books a lot. I just say everyone needs more books in their when, lives. When is your book coming out? Uh, oh, dear. <laughs> well, it's been on the back burner for a while. It's going to come out soon. It's going to come out soon, I promise. Yeah, I'm doing okay. a Game of Thrones book, um, which okay, well, my friend, my friend is, is illustrating it, and it's beautiful. We, we went to theater school together and he's do, he's done like, I think about 150 illustrations for it. Oh, wow. 
Okay, so well, I can interview you about your book. Oh, great. Yeah. I'll, that'll be awesome. I'd love to come on your channel whenever. That'll be great. Uh, okay, before we go, and my, I do my thank you to you, there is a show that um, I don't know if Justin's still here. We were talking about yesterday. It's called Brave New World. Are you watching it? No. Okay. Oh, hang on. Is that the – who's in it? Uh, it is with Harry Lloyd and the beautiful girl from Downton Abbey, the youngest sister. And uh, El I think it's Eldridge from who plays Solo. Yeah. Um, Solo. Yeah, I I I know it. Um, the, the costumes yeah. are really cool, and we actually so I watched one episode last night. It's on Peacock, which I've never heard of before. It must be an American network. Uh, cool. Although Harry Lloyd and the, oh maybe it is, maybe it's not American, maybe it's British because uh, two of the main actors are British. I actually, the thing is, what my a lot of what I do is I get impatient and if all episodes don't drop at once i just basically wait until it all drops and then i can binge it so i've been doing that with, with quite well it's already on season two and i just found out about it so um, it was sort of I'm, yeah and anyway yeah. so last night my husband and i watched the first episode and my husband was like wow the design like not even costumes because he doesn't usually notice that stuff he said wow this is gorgeous so okay. for him to say something like that but the costumes are so fun, like lots of really cool fabric manipulations and cool, cool. textures and neat, like just lots of pleating. Like, like I was like, oh, my God, they must have gone to cement pleating and just gone to town or something. <laughs> like they, just, they tried every type of pleating they could think. Let's let's make up a new pleat. <laughs> yeah. Do you know do you know cement pleating by any chance or in England? Do you know uh, them? Do I know? Do you know of Cement Pleating? Do you know that company, Cement Pleating? The name doesn't even no. Weirdly, oh. it doesn't even know. I don't. Oh, know. I was just wondering because they're in England, but they do all the pleating for all pretty much all of the productions, all of the film and TV productions. Well, that's fascinating. I don't. I wonder where they're based. Probably London. But, I think but. they're in London, and I uh, I call I called them one point. <laughs> like I was stalking them because they do they did all the pleating for Game of Thrones. So I would like call them and be like, "Can I talk to you?" <laughs> <laughs> it's only way to do it. <laughs> I did. I was kind of like stalking them, and then they yeah, would send me yeah. pictures and stuff. So that was very cool. But I was like, I never knew about pleating. Like I didn't have an understanding about pleating, and it's very cool how they do it. Yeah. So this this show, uh, there's this one scene. I don't know if you've read Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, but there's this one scene. It's supposed to be like where they're having like a giant like kind of orgy. It's almost like a rave, but they're all taking Soma, which is the drug that they, they use in okay. the world. And they're all wearing these crazy outfits. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Christopher has to see this. I think he'll love it. it. I don't, I'm going to imagine I'm, I'm going to look it up in a second and go, ah, oh, right, that thing. I just I'm terrible with, you know, titles and names and people and places. And other than that, I'm pretty good at remembering stuff. But, you know, okay. I'm just, <laughs> just terrible um, Oh, Josephine says hello, and she says that you look like an actor from the end of the effing world. I haven't seen that show. Um, yes, I've. Uh, have you I, had that before? Yeah, there's this. There's this not particularly pleasant character. In, oh dear. Uh, the end of the effing world, and um, uh, I have a local shop that I go into, and the girl in there was like, "You got to watch this program." Uh, she was the, one of the people serving in there. She's, "You got to watch it just because you're in it." So I'm watching. I'm like, "Oh great!" So this guy is horrific but he has a mustache so <laughs> okay so that's the similar <clears throat> um, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> anyways guys so we're going to wrap things up Th uh, congratulations to south london reseller for winning the yeah. book you're going to get this in the mail christopher's book it's also in i have a link to it in, in description as well thank so you if anybody want, is interested in it and christopher <laughs> i want to thank you so much for coming it's this like i love talking with you we always had yeah. such a blast well, I mean, yeah, last time was fun, but I, I fell asleep and we missed half yeah, of it. Yeah, it was fun. Like, um, if anybody doesn't know, Christopher went to bed. And I was expecting you to come back, but you didn't. <laughs> but but you know what I'm going to do? If we do another Oscar party, because it's such a time change between the two of us. We're like, yeah. I think you're um, seven hours or no, yeah, you're like five hours ahead of yeah. me. Yeah. What we could yeah. do is we could do an afternoon one like we're doing today. <laughs> If you, if you want yeah, that's to. probably the best. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you can party and, you know, you don't have to worry about having to do a live stream. <laughs> oh, no, Angel Over, we're, we are watching Lovecraft Country. I am. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, do you want to tell everyone where they can find you? We already got some people following you on social media. Uh, well, me. Uh, yeah, you. Well, uh, I mean, well, on a Twitter. Um, 
I think what am I a close on film or Chris Lavity? I'm not sure what, what I'm at, what I'm actually on as. Um, but it's there. You got Instagram. Uh, they're probably the best places to find me. Probably Twitter at the moment, um, or you know, obviously my website, Close on Film, which you should be able to find relatively easy. I'm on Facebook too, but I don't really use it. So yeah, and Instagram your YouTube channel. Uh, my YouTube channel, yeah. That, that, I think yeah. If you go to Instagram, all the links are on there. Um, I, I may, maybe I'll send you my link along, and you can help promote. Yeah, I, I have I, your. I have your Instagram. You have actually two Instagrams. You have Close on Film, and you have Christopher uh, Laverty. Yeah, but which I, I don't use anymore. One so final too. question: Are you actually a lord? Yeah. You are an actual lord. So do you want to explain what that is to people, American? Uh, <laughs> I'm. I'm not. I'm not an official lord. It not was, an official lord. You're lord a lord of fashion. It was a joke. Um, it was a running joke that got going, um, and I, I ran with it and actually changed it on my passport and on my bank card. Um, and I did it for a joke, and people have taken it quite seriously. I just thought it would be a bit of a laugh. But I tell you one thing: it's pretty good. You get upgraded in hotels. Um, <laughs> really. Oh, well. I'm yeah, going to change mine to lady then. I'm just changing lady. your name. You can call yourself what you like. You yeah, don't that's actually. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, um, but yeah, not, 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 a, not a real lord, but yeah. sort of. Lord. I like lord. calling you Lord Christopher. <laughs> I like that. It's so fun. <laughs> if you like it, let's go with that. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay, everybody, thank you so much thank for you. coming. And we had a, a really great uh, group of people who came today, too. I really appreciate it. And thank if anybody. You. And if anybody is watching on the replay, uh, thank you so much for watching the show. And we're going to have Christopher back again in another time very soon, hopefully. Okay. Yeah, I'll bye, now. bye, everybody. Bye, <laughs> right, guys. Bye. Bye.